I hope you enjoy this next episode of Behind the Camera. During this program, we'll be interviewing some really interesting people. During the interview, we'll be talking about their story, how they started, and so much more. I'll be creating a portrait session right afterward and give you a first-hand look at the finished product and how I handle a location portrait session. We'll also have some fun along the way. It's a great time. It's a great program. I hope you like it because some of the best stories happen right behind the camera. Presbyterian Church in Tarboro. This is my church. I was married at that altar many years ago. We're going to photograph the Reverend Dr. Ben Kane, and we're going to talk a little bit first about the church and what's been going on. He's asked me to uh, do some photographs of him for the website and the church, so we'll get right to that. Let's go ahead and talk to Ben. All right, it's been 40 plus years I was standing right on this, this altar right here, okay. uh, the, blank, the, the blank page in front of me okay. of life, Amy and I walking down the aisle, and I'm, okay. back, and I'm back here again. <laughs> Just when you get away, they pull you back in. True story. <laughs> uh, so uh, besides that, um, I guess it's all, it's all about the story. I mean, I, I just have got the calling, which I'm proud of and honored to be uh, uh, installed as an elder. But what, what, where, where did your calling come from? Like, oh, wow. what, you, when you started the ministry, you started the steps toward where you are now. What was those first steps? I can go back to my childhood and, and where, what got me here, basically, but uh, not looking for the whole story, but uh, what, what got you over that threshold? Great question. Uh, so I grew up in the church, so yours is, you're going back 40 years. I would go back 38 years. Uh, and uh, just to throw out that you've been married longer than I've been alive, <laughs> but uh, nonetheless... <laughs> Uh, I grew up in the church. My dad was a minister. He was always in the pulpit. Um, and to be honest with you, the girls have been asking me, why did I go into ministry? Did you want to be a minister when you were a little kid? And I said, no, I wanted nothing to do with ministry. Why would I go into ministry? Um, so fast forward, I loved every part of the church for the fun parts, right? Youth group, confirmation, the trips, the mission trips, all that kind of stuff. Um, went to college and loved taking religion classes, and so a professor said, why don't you go get a PhD in religion? And I mm -hmm. thought, okay, I'll study religious people. Like, I'm looking out of their sanctuary. I'll study these people, but I don't mm -hmm. want to lead these people. And the truth is, God just kept saying, like, you actually aren't called to sit out there. You're called to sit up here and to stand up here. And every time I did it, I felt more and more comfortable. And the truth was, it was because I remembered what my dad was doing one and two I just I, I come alive when I'm in the pulpit I come alive when I read the scriptures mm -hmm. and I like to be honest with you I don't know what else I would do as the reason that I'm called to do this <laughs> like right I would I would love nothing more than to be a basketball coach a basketball player uh, you know an artist a writer all those things but like I, I need the church and I need the pulpit so I, I don't know other than to say like it's where I like feel most comfortable that has brought you to now okay um, and you know what we've been going through for the last year. Um, my first time in the church, uh, I think it's almost been about a year ago uh, since we were here as, yep. as a family. And, and that's the part that I feel that where the loss is, that people have family they can't see, but now they can't see their church family. And that's the part that I think is really, really tough. And, but coming into the church uh, for the first couple times, the first time, and seeing, and seeing all the people actually there, but in pictures. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it's probably going to show that in a moment, but having the pictures in the back of the pews, I think, is pretty cool. Yes. Um, myself, I collaborate often with other people in the industry. Uh, how about other, other ministers in, in the area? I mean, how would they kind of adapt? Do you feel like they're adapting to this whole situation? So it, it was March 13th when, I like to say, the world changed dramatically. It was a Friday. Our schools just got canceled. Uh, CDC had come out and said, like, it's just not safe to gather. So we, we said two weeks, right? I don't know if you remember this, but oh, <laughs> yeah. we're going to be out for two weeks, right? And then we'll be back. Um, that was 11 months ago, uh, almost coming up on, on a year, as you said. Yeah. And suddenly we went from, as a friend joke, like we went from church right in here mm -hmm. to, um, to, to Ben as the pastor of, and every pastor in every church in America suddenly was the televangelist, right? We were all on TV. <laughs> we had to be. <laughs> Um, so, so the shift was, let's keep what we do well, 
but put it online, like do YouTube, do Facebook. Oh, everybody was doing different things. And what happened was we all started to collaborate and say, mm -hmm. this is what I'm trying. Um, what are you doing? And it was an incredibly supportive ministry of mm -hmm. like, okay, so all, it, rarely in, in the world, especially in America, is everybody on the same playing field, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It was as if someone said like, it was as if the world had a snow day and you couldn't do anything. <laughs> and, and everybody had to adapt, I guess is the word. So I got in touch with churches as big as, mm -hmm. you know, 4,000 members, and mm -hmm. they obviously got money and, and technology, and that was all great. But we had to adapt to what we could do, and that is we had the sound system, we have the video system, we have YouTube. Mm -hmm. so, so it was an adaptability, but I would say more than that, it was a support system of saying, we can do this together. How do we support the entire town? So just pick Tarboro. How do we support the entire town right. um, and do it well? And I think another piece, too, was we closed, St. James closed, mm -hmm. First Baptist closed, and Calvary closed. And it was as if we were all saying, we want to take this seriously. Mm -hmm. Let's all close and, uh, and be the church for the community. And then as we've reopened, mm -hmm. and that's different for each, each of our churches, we've done that together and collaboratively in some respects. So, um, I know that during that march, during that time, uh, the Sunday prior to that, I, I think, was the last service. Yep. I remember photographing from the back. Yeah. We had that guest minister that was here. That, yeah. And uh, we went south to visit the grandkids, and we'll take them home with us for a while. A couple of weeks, be fine. <laughs> uh, let's see. Three months later, we're still uh, teaching kids on Zoom. Yep. And, and uh, that was kind of a interest. It was a very calming day when we dropped them off and drove home. It was a nice ride home on 95. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, and here we are still. We haven't gotten back in. And I think the fact that we've, we have uh, embraced technology has kept us in touch with our church family, which is really important. And it's hopefully we can see the daylight coming that we can mm -hmm. get back in here again. Uh, we've started, you started the outside ministry, which has been great. And for those who want to social distance and come in right. and at least be able to have a physical contact, I can see you other than through a screen, you know, so it's a little bit better uh, and have and feel like there's, there's light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. So. Uh, but it's, it's, and, and that's really the part of it that amazes me that um, where the loss is that we just can't be here. And uh, hopefully it'll, it'll get better. But uh, what's going to get even better is that we're going to dress you up in a few moments. And the reason why I'm here is to talk a little bit, uh, but also to do your portrait. Thank so you. we're going to use that on the church uh, website and uh, really get you out there. Okay. And I'm going to put all this away and, and uh, rearrange what we have here and see if we can do a couple of uh, portrait sessions um, using some different backgrounds. I, I, I always go to a location in advance to see what I'm going to do and, and line up, but I'm often actually, because this church is so beautiful and the light in this church is so awesome, uh, if I'm in that pew, which way over there, I'm usually hitting Amy on the side like, look at the light on the, guy, look at the, light on the back of that guy's head, it's so awesome, and she's like, quit looking at it. <laughs> I'm always looking at the light, how it falls on people, and, and uh, that's one of the things that's always on my mind often. So. Uh, anyway, let's, uh, we'll, we'll go for it and uh, yep. take your time. I'm going to move a few things around and we'll set up and we'll get into some portrait right. mode. I'll go get pretty. Sweet. In the church, I decided to go with a two-light setup because the window light in this church is absolutely beautiful. I have a large umbrella. Shooting through the umbrella and getting it close to the subject kind of gives me more of a simulated window light look. It's very soft light. So I changed the exposure a little bit trying to get happy with it. The third one I was really happy because I had a really nice balance between the umbrella and also the balance of the background as well. So this way I can kind of get a nice uh, separation from, from the background to the subject. That light is absolutely beautiful when it's moved in really close to the subject. So doing a headshot, we wanted to come in close to him, so I moved it in a little closer and it really gives a nice soft window light effect. And also with a longer lens, the 7200 helps to block out that background and be able to really isolate the background from the foreground. We changed directions still using the large umbrella, beautiful light in this church, and also the most awesome, gorgeous uh, windows, and the stained glass windows gives this beautiful color, so we wanted to use that and kind of give it a little more strength to his pose, but the color in the background is what I really wanted to show, and the, and the, large, the large umbrella really helped to go ahead and soften the subject. Here I changed to a smaller umbrella, Ben changed to the traditional robe, and I wanted to pinpoint the light a little bit. It does have a little bit different characteristic of light, 
but I wanted to get a little different look. Uh, watch your backgrounds. You can see the cross is shining from the reflection from light, so I, I could retouch it, but I moved them over a little bit, so I was able to eliminate that problem. And sometimes you really have to watch the background, and what, especially dealing with large light sources like that and reflective items. Uh, here I decided to go ahead and change it up a little bit, and I changed to more of a wider angle lens. I repositioned my main light, and uh, with no pockets and nowhere for his hands, I got this large Bible from the pulpit and decided to let him hold it. I wasn't really crazy about that, but it looks like he's getting ready to run away with that Bible. Um, but it gave me a, a, you can see the different look, the wide angle lens. It's 35 millimeter, 1.8 lens, and it really has a more of a real dr dramatic look to it when you get close to the subject. Ben went ahead and changed to his white robe, and I moved my main light way off to the side to give it some real dimension. Anytime you can get your light off to the side like that, it really does add more dimension to the subject. I knew we were going to do a little sort of an action shot with the, with the water, and it really does uh, give that subject a whole different look when that light is really off to an angle in more of a profile position. We finished up on this area and we had one more spot to use. We were going to go ahead and move over to the, uh, the baptism font. The window light really right next to that is really gorgeous. So all I had to do is just add a little bit of fill light in that location to help kind of open the shadows up a little bit on his, on his robe and, and the side of his face. Uh, here I went ahead and, and shut that light off. You can see it's a little more dramatic. Uh, the shadows are deeper. And then we went ahead and uh, uh, decided to keep it off. I kind of like the window light right there. And uh, went ahead and have him look up at the camera and keep that dramatic look still so we can go ahead and uh, keep it more natural looking. It was an awesome session. I really appreciate Ben helping me out. And we're at Howard Memorial Presbyterian Church in Tarboro. Thanks to Ben for helping me today. And when I'm in church, I think I sit right over there, my picture is. Uh, thank you so much for stopping in. For more details and to see more of the episodes, please subscribe to my channel below. And to find out more details about our portraits, go to BillGood.com. And don't forget, some of the best things happen right behind the camera. <laughs>